right, check this out. This is a quick tip about how to import an FBX file and one common problem that you will come across almost all the time or a lot of the time. Say you want to import an FBX. I'm going to go to import and set my import option and make sure I'm set for my file type of FBX and I'm going to hit import. And then I'm going to get the import window over here and you want to navigate to the folder of where you have, say, a file that you want to open up. <clears throat> so I'm going to open up this FBX file, and it's just of a random model. I don't know. I know it has a problem, though. I'm going to go ahead and hit Open, and when you get your importer window right here, just come down and go ahead and hit Import. So technically, the thing is huge. I mean, I can see my grid right here, but as I scroll out, uh, somewhere along the line, we're going to get the object. Okay, well, we know it's in there. Everything's looking pretty good. But the scale is really wacky. So let's do this first. Always come to the outliner and check out your, your root node here. In this case, it's AMNOT, AMNOT. And here's the various shapes associated with this model. OK, pretty basic, uh, simplistic, and no big deal. However, let's go ahead and select that whole model. And I want to look and see at the attributes and the channel box over here where our attributes are, where is it sitting in space? And you can see it has a scale of one right now, and it's way out there in the X, Y, and Z. So sometimes you can easily just sort of go ahead and hit the zero and zero this out, and the model will then kind of zero itself out on the grid. Now, another thing you gotta look at is the scale. Right now we have like, say, one. You might be able to put in a value of, say, 0.5, all the way around on each one of these um, attributes here. So there it is at 0.5. But even then, it's still not, we're still not seeing the grid. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and manually, ooh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Disregard that, I was stuck on there. Um, let's come over here and select our object as a whole from the outliner and scale this thing down. We're just going to scale it down. And I'm going to hit F on the keyboard just to sort of focus on that. Hit F. All right. And we'll go another time. Hit F on the keyboard. So I'm just bringing it down, hitting F on the keyboard. And now we're down. Now we're down kind of like the size it should be. Okay. So that's kind of a common problem that you'll run into is kind of uh, it's way out there in space and you need to kind of center it out and zero it out. So that's an easy way to do it. Now, one thing you want to look at now over here is your scale value. It's a scale value of 001. So if I were to save this out and bring this into another Maya, um, you know, a, a project or something, I, more than likely this scale on this is going to be really wacky. It might be really super tiny on the grid. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to check it out and see what would happen with it. But what we want to do now that we have it set where we want is we want to come up and modify and freeze our transformations. And now this gives proper values to your X, Y, and Z, your rotational values, and your scale values are now at a scale of 1. So that's it. And that's really cool because now we can select this and sort of scale it accordingly to the grid and kind of know you know, what size it should be in a scene, okay? So that's one common problem that you can solve by just working with your channel box over here and your scale. All right, so look out for that. And I'll have another quick tip just uh, for your viewing pleasure about some other problems as I, as I come across them. So, hey, thanks for watching. Hope this has been helpful. And be a good person, read a book. And thanks for watching.